Hello and welcome back to the Blues Focus podcast. And today I'm joined by a very special guest, uh, Will Brazier. Uh, works for Sporf, does some stuff with Sky Sports and BBC. Might recognise his face, big Blues fan. How are you, Will? I'm all right, mate. Just trying to, uh, you know, guide myself through the misery that is watching Birmingham City Football Club at the moment. <laughs> yeah, relatable. And then, as always, uh, Tom Garrett from the Blues Focus podcast is also joining us. How are you, Tom? Yeah, good, thanks, mate. Just exactly what we all said, I think. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we could all say that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I um, think we're all on the same wavelength at the moment, and this probably isn't going to be the happiest podcast ever, but we'll try and be as positive as we possibly can be. Um but yeah, no, just before we get on, kind of get on into things, uh, check out the Patreon the links in the description and um, yeah, just turn notifications on if you are subscribed so you never miss any of the action. Got some good guest pods coming up at the moment with the likes of Martin O'Connor and Martin Granger, etc. cetera. Um, so just kicking things off, boys, uh, Millwall. <laughs> uh, don't think much needs to be... Uh, well, much was expected, but um, it was better than what we've seen recently, but it still wasn't good enough. Uh, what were your thoughts on the game, Will, from what you saw? Well, I, I watched the Wickham game about, what was that, about a week ago? And yeah, I just said to like myself that. then, I was like, this is this is absolutely becoming a chore because that was awful. <laughs> so, and then I was like, I've watched the highlights of that and that was six, six minutes, 19, I think. And even that was a chore, trying to struggle through that because, I mean, I wouldn't want to be working in the social media department at this time because, one, it's not their fault, and, two, they've got to try and put a positive spin on it. Yeah. But there were some uh, some shots in there. I mean, you know, like when you play football manager and you do, like, uh, extended highlights. and that's Oh, just, yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't have even made it into that. So, um, no. it, I mean, it just looked awful. And, again, defensive mistakes just really... There's experienced players at the back there, like lots of appearances under the belt, like professionals in this league and above. And I don't know what it is, just switch off constantly. And yeah, it's, I, I honestly I couldn't I couldn't have put it better myself. It's it's frustrating because one of our better signings this season has probably been George Friend. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, I feel like we're starting to see even his head drop a bit yeah. now kind of fall into that Birmingham City mentality, really. And uh, same with Neil Etheridge, another positive signing that just seems to be on the down with the rest of them. And it's a mentality we can't seem to shake off at the moment. What are your thoughts on it, Tom? Yeah, I'm pretty much just the same as you two, really. I think just to pick up on the George Friend point, I think, you know, as you say, even him, now he's getting to a stage where I think he's probably looking around and thinking, you know, am I the only one? You know, we argue with Beveridge in there, maybe a couple of others, but... I personally think from the game against uh, Millwall, I think my, my my view on it is if you're second from bottom and you know, you're know you in a relegation fight, which we clearly are, don't play five at the back or three at the back, whatever you want to call it, don't do it. Stick with your four at the back. You know, you've played it all season. Uh, um, I don't think we can pick two centre-halves for, you know, for one game when we're playing four. So to you know, try and put three in there, I think it can confuse players. I think, again, with San Jose, maybe that was the reason for the error. Uh, for the goal again, that is an individual area. But after going one nil down, you know, I thought we looked quite bright. Really, We're not not doing too much with the ball, but you know, keeping the ball well. But again, you know, if, you, if you're not going to score goals, we're not going to win games. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I think definitely the system is something that needs to be talked about. Um, and obviously, Will, I I know you saw the uh, Wickham game, and I'm pretty sure we lined up with uh, four at the back for that game. Um. But I don't know whether you've seen us line up with five at the back at all this season, but they're two very different systems. Yeah, uh, it's, it's hard, isn't it? Because you, you get down to the bottom and then you've got to try new things, but then the things he seems to be trying aren't working. And, and like Tom said, like trying to force a partnership when you're, especially away from home against Millwall, who are, it's not like they're a team that are going to sort of play football. They're going to get at you. And, and that's exactly where the goal came from as well, wasn't yeah, it? So yeah. yeah, it's just, I mean, it, but that Wickham game, wasn't it? It was like, it seemed more positive because it what was that? Four, two, three, one. But then we were playing yeah, yeah. two holding midfielders against bottom of the league. And yeah, I don't know. It, those are the sort of games that, you know, you need to look to get three points from. And to yeah. be honest, I actually thought we started really brightly in that one in particular um, Dukey definitely looked to have a better better game to begin with than he's had recently. 
Um, and I honestly thought we were going to go on and win that game. Um, but, you know, it was starting to look like it would take a lot. And then um, we're all expecting a substitution. Um, and that doesn't get made until Mark Roberts is sent off. And, you know, we've got nice new striker, Sam Cosgrove, bench warming still. Um, Where was he last night? Was he was he injured last night? I think he was yeah. injured. Yeah. Apparently he was injured. Um, I don't know much about that. Not heard much about it, to be honest. Um, doesn't feel like a Karanka sign in that, does it? No, it doesn't. Oh. Um, I mean, you know, Dong Ren, I don't know if you listened to the BBC WM interview. No, I mean, was there, was there anything of substance? Um, yeah, I suppose there was quite a bit, to be honest. He kind of just started throwing numbers. I feel a lot of numbers at fans, <laughs> um, you know, saying, oh, we've made this profit here, this profit there. And it's like, that's not what we want to hear, really. Um, but he, he did talk about, um, like, that we've been using scouts, scouting companies in France and Spain, rather than the scouts at the club who are on furlough. So we've been using those agencies and uh, it just doesn't seem to be going too well. <laughs> um, I'm not a fan of that personally. I think one the scouting department is one of the key departments, uh, key departments at a football club. Steve McLaren said it, Chris Hewton said it, you know, they are literally the most important part of the club because they're the ones that find the players that you need. Um, so I, I don't know. What are your thoughts on using agencies? It's just like what you uh, also like if you're a player looking at Birmingham, apart from the wages, which obviously substantially left, thank God, than when Harry Redknapp was there. But it's like, <laughs> what are you buying into? You don't know what you I come, come to Birmingham and join our low blocks, like we're taking over the world. <laughs> you're a young player, I don't see the, the attraction there. I no. just, and, and obviously, because of the coming and going of managers as well, that's you don't you could be playing for Karanka one minute and then and then to use agencies as well. I mean, well, you'll know more than me, Tom, being being in the game yourself. But I don't, I don't think that's anything to show off about. No, definitely not. What do you think, Tom? I've seen a lot today. You know, read a lot and took a lot of information in. Really, some good, some bad, and I think you know just touching on that. Not on the agency point, I suppose. I don't. I don't agree with it. I think you know you you, you want your. I think you want your, your homegrown players coming through. You know from from your own sources, really. And I think you know when when you hear that they are on furlough, I think you know that is definitely going to piss a lot of people off. Yeah. Um, you know, I've read read a few things about you know Chinese football today, which I didn't know. You know, from different journalists and stuff like that, and it. it it just does it from what I'm reading and, and you know what I'm seeing and what I've heard. I feel like there's there's definitely some. I mean, we all know there is anyway, but there's definitely something going on behind the scenes. I think I don't know what the plan is. I don't think any of us do. No. Um, and to, to be quite honest, I don't think they care what we think. And and that's one thing I think that you know it frustrates me more than anything because you know I understand more than anyone. I'm annoyed, but you know it, at the end of the day, that there's, there's there's not a lot as fans we can do really, other than you know just I suppose keep keep, keep supporting them as we do. I think that's exactly. the most frustrating thing as well, isn't it? Just because you feel so helpless. I feel like proper disenfranchised with it at the moment. Like, yeah, it does yeah. feel like a chore to sit down and watch a game. Well, one because the football's so bad, but just you, 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 what can we actually do? Like, you don't want to start for like, well, not that you can vote with your feet right now, but even if that was an option, that's sort of turning against, especially I think the Blues fans stand for as well. Just just get behind the players, whoever else is out, whoever is on the field. And then, I don't know, yeah, nothing's going to change until the, the owners go, so. Definitely. Um, I think that's that's the big point. Everyone wants them gone. Um, it's been just decline ever since they stepped through the door, really. The second row it went. I think we all remember where we were when that happened. <laughs> I, actually, I was in the office, I was like, I actually remember. Someone had to buy my lunch for me because I wouldn't leave my desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I remember being sat in my RE classroom um, and my Aston Villa mate, uh, just he just tapped me and said, oh, Rao, it's been sacked, you know. I'm like, no, he hasn't. He, I thought he was winding me up. And then I, I genuinely look it up. I'm like, oh, my God. And then my RE teacher looks over at me like, what's wrong with you? You look like you're about to cry. I'm like, miss, I might at this point. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Um, That's uh, the highest we've been though, probably under their yeah. ownership, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was the first month of their, their ownership. So, um, I was thinking the other day, I'd love to know the win percentage of us in the championship. 
Because apart yeah, from that first season, no. yeah, I can't. I oh, it's unbelievable the decline, really, when you look at it. Um, I mean, I, personally, I love going back and watching some of those Gary Rowett games, or even you know Lee Clark's first season. Uh, looking at highlights from them games or uh, Chris Hewton's one season in the championship. I mean, we can all look back and love the time in the Premier League, but I, I don't think that will be coming back for a long time. <laughs> no, but even like you said, isn't it? Like you think back to, I um, went to Rowett's first game and we played Watford, who I think were top of the table at the time. And just, What a game that was. Yeah. But it's so simple, isn't it? Like you had a team that worked hard. You had a manager that sort of, you knew what was, you knew his vision and his philosophy. He was like, We've got pretty shit players on the ball, but they work hard and they'll, they'll grind out result. And and it helps, obviously, that he played for us and he was a local lad. So it's it's not you like horribly. You've only got to look down the road at Villa to see Dean yeah. Smith, who's in charge, yeah. who's a Villa fan. Captain's Jack Grealish, a boy, a boy, a Villa fan. I mean, it's not hard to please us, really, is it? No, and I think you know, as Blues fans, we've always just had that kind of mentality of you know, just give one hundred percent and we'll be happy, win, lose or draw. And we're not even seeing that now. And I think that's the frustrating thing. Maybe you could look at last night's performance as a slight improvement in desire, but it, it's still not good enough. And looking at where we are in the table with the squad we've got, we just shouldn't be there at the end of the day. We just shouldn't be there. But I suppose that's a good segue onto this season. When Where do you guys feel it's gone wrong for... Karanka and um, I suppose what standout players have there really been this season? I'll start with you, Tom. I think for me, I think I said to you the other day, Tom, I think it was probably just after Christmas where we picked up a couple of good away results. Um, obviously, our own form has been terrible all year anyway, but I think that kind of took the pressure off that. I think we beat Reading, um, obviously went on to beat Borough as well. Just after that, I think there was another team before that, I can't remember. Um, but I think that kind of took the pressure off him. And then I think, you know, in the last three games we've had where we've been playing teams so more sort of around us, uh, within us, you know, I think if you don't win them games, you're going to get relegated. And I think, obviously, that's where, you know, all, all the pressures come from. But I think, you know, I, I honestly think now, you know, football's changed a lot, I think, in the last, I don't know, 10, 10 years, say. And I think you look, you know, you've only got to look at, I, I was reading something the other day about, you know, the way Mourinho was with Rashford and Rashford sort of come out and he said, you know, he, He's not man managing me properly, and I think football's changed now. And I think you know for the good in a way. And I think players are a lot more sort of how can I put it, a lot sensitive, I suppose. Now I think they want that arm round them. Yeah. I mean, you, you see, you know, even not you was just talking about Rowett. I can imagine him being someone in the dressing room. You know, if you go into him with a problem or you know if it's related to football or off the field, on the field, I think he'd be someone who'd be there for you. And I think you know after watch, I've never really seen much of a cranker, but after watching him over the eight months, you know, I'd, you know, I don't see that from him, and, and you know maybe. You know, he's lost that all because I did see that at him at Middlesbrough. But, you know, I just think I'm, that's for me that, that, you know, that's where it's gone wrong, really. I think you've lost the players just don't look like they've got a direction, you know, where they're going. I think they're scared to, to play forward and express themselves. And, you know, we, I just don't think he knows his best team, which eight months into a season, you know, it's not it's not going to be good, is it? No, definitely not. What do you think, Will? Where do you think it's gone wrong for him? I think what Tom says absolutely spot on. I think there's been moments where you think it's sort of been cracked and, you know, we're on the on the turn, but it just doesn't happen. I, I was thinking back to, I think we'd had two away wins. You remember when Gary Gardner was in that rich vein of goal scoring? Form? Yeah, a couple of headers <laughs> yeah. or a couple of headers, wasn't it? Yeah. And then we had yeah. Wickham at home and we won them up. And if we'd have won that, we'd have gone, I think, three straight wins in a row. And then we had yeah. like a fairly easy tie for that. But then we start, we won them up and we sort of played a low block against Wickham. Yeah. Who, who were well, still at the bottom of the table. Yeah. And then obviously they came back and, and won that game. So I, I just I just think back to those opportunities where we could have pounced and, and really gone for it, but chose to sit back. So, but everything Tom says spot on, yeah, not, not don't know you start an 11. I mean, I, we, we, I think if all of us came up with a start an 11, we'd probably have three different lineups, wouldn't we? So, yeah. yeah. I think that's quite scary and not to have a system. I think this day and age is full, like as as well as the man management side of it, the philosophy side of it is absolutely vital. And there's well, if there is a philosophy, it's very hard to find. Definitely, yeah. and I think I, I don't know about you guys personally, but I remember you know the Rowett days, and I I'd look at a lineup, and I'd I'd never expect anything different. A lot of the time, there might yeah. be the occasional one change, but it it was rarely ever that different every game and I think that consistency is missed massively yeah, yeah. I think you can do that as well and like, like people talk about the fatigue and stuff but like 
I don't want to get like too technical, but like the advancements in in recovery, I mean, you can you can certainly oh, keep, keep a team going yeah. for, for for what you can do. So I don't I don't buy it. it's like a fitness thing. We obviously had had a few injuries, but you know you just go like for like, wouldn't you? And that yeah, that yeah. doesn't happen. It's just. Definitely. As you say, no, even even for like lower league, you know, you look down at League One now. And yeah, you know, even teams you watch them in games against Premier League teams and they can hold their own now for 70 minutes. A few, you know, ten exactly. years ago they couldn't do that. Um, because of the like you say, because of the advancements we've got now in, in you know, fit, fitness, I suppose, keeping players fit and routine and all that. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think, you know, bang on with the recovery thing. I you see there's so much you can do to help a player these days, and it it baffles me how it's never enough. Yeah, I got like if, if someone like the Duke or like George Friend was coming in and out, or even San Jose, but then that begs the question like why would we purchase them? But like the older players, you can sort of understand. But there's there's a core group there that you could just definitely play and play and play. But maybe that ties into results. But even when we were doing slightly well, I, I still felt like it was chop and change as well. Yeah, yeah, it was, and you know, I think it was that early phase of the season where everyone wasn't really sure on how they wanted to play yet, who they wanted to play. Still very much an experimental time in the season for every team. But, you know, every team eventually settled on something and we never did. And I think that's where it's really gone wrong in the fact that we've lacked an identity and lacked consistency. And that has really, really been the downfall. But I think, you know, common names that have come up so far particularly George Friend, you'd consider probably a standout in this poor team. Um, so a credit for that signing. But I think we expected kind of Friend or Clayton and players like that to come in because they're Karanka guys. Um, Etheridge has obviously been a, a bright light. I think he's the best keeper we've had since kind of Kuzak or Randolph. I do worry about Etheridge though, just because... I think you get you get the highlight really the amazing reflex saves, but then from crosses and corners from the games I've seen, it's just you know it's hard the basics. Enough. Yeah, it's so scary when the ball's coming in, especially when they've got you know like Wickham had a Fenwer, like someone like that. You know, it's it's scary when those balls are coming in. I was going to say you know Adebayo pretty well from the stuff you've done with him uh, in the League Cup. Um, um, well, man of the match against us, wasn't he in that first yeah, game? Yeah. So. yeah, he was. He was. Um, is he, is he really that big in real life? <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? But do you know what it is? Like when he came on in that game, absolutely fantastic, wasn't he? So like, yeah. I think he's proved a lot of the doubt was wrong um, at this level because he just does what he does and he does it very well. Yeah, definitely 100%. And it's, it's that kind of character and identity that we lack in the side. You know, we don't really have that sort of players that, well, you could say Duke, you know, cross a ball into him, he'll, he'll yeah. get in. But um Duke's been in in and out the side this season. I think even he looks lost a bit, especially from post match interviews. He's just not quite his usual self. And you know, there's rumored moves away in January. Stuff like that will get to a player, won't it? And I I don't know. There, there's a lot going on really uh, to kind of comprehend at Blues, but. I suppose moving on from that and the failure under Karanka uh, under the, the last eight months or so, if he does get the axe, which is looking more and more likely as days go on, who would you guys particularly want to see come into the hot seat? I'll start with you, Will. I don't know. I was trying to wrap my brains before I came on and just think, I know Paul Cook's been mentioned a lot, but I think Paul Cook's quite would just look at this objectively and say, like, this is an absolute shitstorm. Why would I want to... Because he, at the moment, his stock is high, so why would I want to come into this? He's yeah. just come out of one as well, hasn't he? Really? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly, yeah. So, and then you start to look, and then, you know, let's judge on what we've had before. We've had a, a decent manager who worked hard with everything with Gary Rowett, and he got replaced by Gianfranco Zola. <laughs> but, I mean, you look at the Bournemouth candidates even there, like, well, Frank Lampard's a bit different, but I think we we'd have like the BTEC version of that. So I don't know who's, who's retired recently, but if they're a big name, they'll probably be on the shortlist. <laughs> um, what about you, Tom? Yeah, I think, I think I said it before and I completely agree with what Will's just said there. I think we've had that many managers now in the last eight years or so. It's like, you know, I find it hard to get excited um, about, about someone. And I think the big issue with us is, you know, we, as I've said before, we get someone in, keeps us up, as you say, we replace him with someone who we think is going to, you know, play this attractive style of football and then we're back at square one again. 
I think if I'm going to be honest as in who I'd want to say, and I put it on Twitter before and I thought it was going to, you know, go into a shit storm, but to be honest, it took off pretty well. So as a brave bold mate, I'm going to say Ali Ucise, a former Blues legend. Who, Love that. Yeah, who's a yeah. uh, very good record at Senegal. Loved by the fans. And I just think, yeah, unless it's Lampard or Eddie Howe, that's my, my view. And I know that ain't going to happen. I see, yeah, see, Eddie Howe, I think, would be ideal, but he wouldn't he wouldn't make that step down. No. I think he'd be either looking for high championship or low Premier League. Um you got me excited with Alu Cisse. Mate, honestly, since I, I know it's not going to happen, but since I've said it, I'm like, is this going to happen now? Come on. <laughs> he did all right in the World Cup, didn't he? Um, yeah. I mean, again, I know it's, you know, sort of, I, I, I don't know the, the ins and outs of the qualifying games to qualify for the World Cup, but I think it was in the in the World Cup a uh, couple of years ago. And I think his stats were something like, you know, he played 37 and won 34 or something stupid like that. And I thought, you know, he's got to be having some impact on, on the group. Definitely. And I think... The only worrying thing about stuff like that is sometimes the jump from international yep. stage into kind of, you know, that every kind of day. league game, yeah, everyday sort of uh, system and way of living, it, it it sometimes doesn't quite settle down with some managers. I mean, I, I suppose the one that comes to me at the top of my head was kind of Chris Coleman after yeah. oh no i do not want christy Coleman. <laughs> no no i wouldn't i wouldn't take him at blues but i'm just saying you know after after um international stage it didn't really yeah. work out yeah, yeah, yeah level um having done so much at wales um to kind of hard to top of, that wasn't it really what he did with yeah. wales as well and it, i think that's just how it is the one thing i don't want to see is craig gardner as interim yeah. Manager, I love the bloke, and uh, he's he's up there, one of my favourite ever Blues players. I've spoken to him; he's a nice guy. I just I think it's way too soon for him to ever be considered for even a caretaker role as Blues boss. Really, it's, I just, can I just say sorry, Tom? I just because the one thing right. I still don't get is how can I understand? You know, he left to you know be was it assistant manager, but. I just think, you know, what? Who, who made that call for him to come back in? Was that him who asked to come back in? Did Blues want him back? I mean, I just, I don't, because to be honest, I think you can see it with him, you know, and I've seen, seen him a few times together now, and there doesn't look like there's any sort of, you know, togetherness between them, talking in between games, you know, discussing things. And I just think, you know, it, to me, he looks like a bit of an outsider, and I don't know whether that's, you know, him being isolated from Karanka's, you know, group, but... I think that ties into like what we spoke about with like different signings and different things that go on at the club. It's 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 one man's decision and that's quite scary. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I think the decisions they've taken at the club since they've come in, the amount of people that were behind the scenes at Blues when they came in and yeah, the yeah. amount that have gone is quite scary. Um, the amount of people that have been replaced and replaced with businessmen, really not football people. And I think Paul Robinson put it best um, in the sense that the club doesn't have enough football people behind it anymore. Yeah. And, but, you, you know, you need that. You need but, that core. So anything they have done well, they've turned into a negative as well. Like Jude Bellingham yeah. getting that money to Dortmund and then all the stuff with the retiring of the shirt. Like, you know, bringing Gary Monk in was absolutely fantastic. And I know there's two sides to that story. Yeah. Obviously that ended sourly and then... I like what we spoke to at the start of the podcast, being sixth in the league with Gary Rower and then just getting rid of him. So I think, as, as as you were saying um, before, Will, sorry, you know, about the... Uh, sorry, mate, she's got out of my head now that I was just going to read Quite carry on. <laughs> um, well, Tom. If that comes back to you, just... Yeah, mate, I'll, I'll have a know. think. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, I'd do anything to get the Rowett days back personally and I'm not I'm not saying like it's the best days in blues history or anything because I think a lot of people <laughs> misinterpret that on Twitter these days you know if you want the Rowett days back you, you're seen as somebody who's just uh, only likes the Rowett times doesn't doesn't look back at kind of the great achievements we've had under McLeish and whatnot but uh, I mean speaking to Roger Johnson the other day about McLeish's departure um, uh, he, he said how shocked he was that it, someone had the you know the, the bollocks to go and do what he did go to the club across the road but I mean that's a that's a pod for another day but maybe we miss a manager like that you know someone kind of classic old-fashioned and you just can't see it happening though with this current regime because they want pretty football and yeah but I even, I even think just on that as well it's like even like many would say Rowett was probably like 
sort of old fashioned, but it was like old fashioned with with new techniques as yeah, well. He was very much on the forefront with with everything like that. Um, and he was just he was just playing the sort of the the deck he was dealt, wasn't he? Yeah, definitely, definitely. He got the best out of them players as well. Uh, you know, two tenth place finishes, especially considering when he took over with twenty second. Started off with a nil nil draw at Wolves, who were flying at the time. I, I remember, um, I think it was Sacco who couldn't stop scoring goals uh, for Wolves at the time, and they were doing well under Kenny Jacket. And then obviously that Watford game will live long in my memory, just because uh, that was such a good night. Uh, going one nil up and then it, it, against top of the table Watford and they equalise and then last five minutes Cottrell great cross Clayton Donaldson header you couldn't ask so much more but that's the thing isn't it like I think, think that's one of our highlights of the last 10 years so that just Which proves is how, well it's worrying but it just proves how little we asked for as well do you know what I mean yeah definitely um, it, it definitely kind of gives that vibe of that we, we just want to see commitment, and yeah, we yeah. definitely saw that under Rowett. Just want Alu C, so that's what we want. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Start we spreading should, the agenda now. It's, it's, like, it's, it's like you say with Duke though last year, and I, I think I've said it on a previous pod, and I always, you know, I think I think that carried us through last year personally. I do with with Jude. I think you know the the way you know, I only went to a couple of games myself last year, but just the way, even when I was watching him on the telly, you know, the way the fans were getting behind him when he was just running back and tackling someone like 20 yards in his in our own half and, you know, picking it up, making a pass, running forward. And and I think, as you say, you know, that's all, all Blues fans want, really. They just want to see, you know, a manager who cares, an owner who cares and, and 11 players who, you know, care on the pitch and, you know, forget that. And I think it's one of them as well. I think, you know, when we're on about Rowett, sorry, it's it's good, isn't it? You know, when you're winning, I think them, you know, them games were winning one nil, two one, uh, two nil, and I think it's good when you're playing that way and you're winning games. Whereas obviously, you know, you play you play like that and lose games. You know, you see people like Steve Bruce at Newcastle now, and he's just under under a lot of pressure. Yeah, definitely. But I think it's unfair criticism. Some of the stuff Steve Bruce has got. Oh, definitely, mate. Yeah, hundred percent. That you know, you look at that squad on paper. It's it's not it's not great. Um, and I think the job he's done there is. Very impressive. It's ugly football, but everyone knows Steve Bruce plays ugly football. But again, does do, do, I mean I don't know what you think, you two think of this, but does that not link in with the the state of the club? As yeah, in, you know, like it, this, I'm not saying you know we're as big as a club as Newcastle, but in terms of you know where we're at uh, with the fans and the owners, you know, I think there's a lot of similarities there, isn't there? Hundred percent. But you know, obviously they don't really like Mike Ashley, but I still think they're a lot better off than we are. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> So I I can't understand the complaints personally, but yeah, no, Ali Cisse then lads, let, yeah. let's fingers crossed. Someone find his uh, his LinkedIn or something, and we'll get a <laughs> we'll get a petition going. Yeah, oh, <laughs> definitely. So kind of moving on to previewing the Sheffield Wednesday game. Um, where do we start? <laughs> Obviously, they're they're just as bad as us, but technically they are better if you take away the points deduction. Um. So I I don't know about you guys, but I'm not too hopeful for that game. What are your thoughts on it, Will? Yeah, I think especially I I think you said it Tom earlier. I think it was when we play more against like those top of the league sides that kind of keep the ball. That's when we sort of maybe hit a little bit more rhythm. But yeah, if it's going to be a scrappy affair, maybe a bit similar to what it was on Wednesday. I mean, I'm not seeing Sheffield Wednesday this season, so I don't know uh, don't know how they're playing, but. I'm not very hopeful of anything. No, me neither. They're very on and off this season, Sheffield Wednesday, but they seem to have settled on um, caretaker manager Tomlinson, who's, I think they've won their last five home games. So... Um, that bodes well then. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's looking good for them. But however, they have been the uh, the, the form-changing side this season, if you beat them, um, by the looks of things. I mean, Wickham got their first win of the season against Sheffield Wednesday. Um, you know, you could look at stuff like that and maybe hope, but uh, I don't know what your thoughts are, Tom. Go on. Pretty much the same, mate. I think it's been the... For me, I think this game, uh, the Mill, probably not the Millwall game so much, the one before, uh, the Coventry and the Wickham games, I think they're all exactly the same. And, you know, we know... We know it's not going to be pretty football. It, you know, it's going to be, as, as Will just said, it's, he's going to be more for it on the day. If you ask me now, is Cranker going to, you know, be able to magically get him up for a game like that? Based on what we've seen so far, I don't think so. And I think it's going to be, I think it'll be close. You know, I think it'll probably be a 1-0, one, 1-1 one, one game. You know, neither could even be 0-0 nil, because nil, I can't see us scoring a goal at the minute. Me neither. Uh, I'd, I'd probably go 1-0 Wednesday, if I'm honest. What would be your score prediction, Will? 2-0 Wednesday. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's that's more than fair. Um, I was just gonna let's just gonna touch on quickly. Um, obviously, we've spoken about the owners uh, at length, really, through this quite a bit. Um, they're a common theme. We've never really been that lucky with owners, and I know people weren't a big fan of kind of Gold and Sullivan and whatnot. But you look back on those times, and we got it quite easy compared to now. Um, so it's. It's a tough one, but would you take going down to League One to get them out of the club? I think I, I obviously never want to sort of wish that on, on the club, mainly because I think when I don't know if any of you guys watch like the the Sunderland documentary on Netflix, yeah, yeah. you sort of forget what the sort the toll it takes on the staff and the the people that are behind the scenes from like the, from the canteen to the ground staff to everything like that. So I'd, I'd never wish. Obviously, that on a club, especially my own club. But I think there is an argument to be said that if the owners were to, I don't know if they they have got a project, but whatever their project was, I think that would be the best chance to get them out going down to a league one. If, obviously, if the price becomes cheaper, then when I mean, you've only got to look at what happened at Sunderland today with the uh, the billionaire, or well, the billionaire air 23 owner, year old, isn't 23 he? year old coming in to take over. But Crazy. obviously that's what Stuart Donald's done there is and, and turned the club into like a good asset to sell. So I think it would make it easier for us to sell. But yeah, uh, hopefully it doesn't come to that. Oh, 100% completely agree. Um, but we might win some games down there. So, you know, and, yeah, and we'd be true. back in the stadium. So yeah, and that yeah, was- go on, take us down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a fresh start would be nice but I don't obviously I wouldn't I wouldn't want to wish it upon my club and if we can really turn around this season then great I'd much prefer that but if if I knew the owners were going to be gone I, I wouldn't be opposed to going down it'd be something different but I think we've all seen with Sunderland and Ipswich how hard it is to get out of League One these days it's a completely different ball game to what it used to be what are your thoughts on it Tom? I think I'm going to be honest now because Will's given me the confidence to say it. And, you know, it's, I've, I've, I've fought it for the last year or so, Matt. Honestly, I've fought it for the last two seasons. Um, you know, it, put, put it this way, I feel like, you know, if we stay up again this year by the skin of our teeth, what's going to change next year? And and, and that, that bit of me now is growing more. And, and as you say, you know, if we did go down and, you know, my granddad's a massive Ipswich fan. I was, gut, you know, he was gutted when they went down. And I think you look at teams like Portsmouth, Leeds, you know, it took them ages to get back out of, you know, to where they are now. And I think, I think you, you, when Wolves went down, sorry, they, you know, they you were lucky to sort of come straight back up and they did really well. And it doesn't always work like that, does it? And I think that's, it, it is hard, as you say, you know, you don't want us to go down and, and lose out financially or anything like that. But I think if you was to offer it to a lot of Blues fans now, you know, with the position we're already in, go down, owners leave, start again. I think the majority would probably agree with that. Yeah. I think it's that thing where nobody wants to say it, but everyone's thinking Thinking it, yeah. yeah. 100%, yeah. It's it's one of those awkward conversations, but I feel like we're all, we're all definitely thinking it. And I think the difference between the ones that bounce back quickly and the ones that don't, you know, you look at Sunderland and Ipswich, they went down and the club was in a mess, really. Yeah. Um, well, it wasn't. We're, we're not in like a, a Wigan or a Bolton sort of position either, are no, we? No. So I feel like, you know, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I'm not that clued up on it. But financially, I don't think we'd be too too bad off in terms of, I think we'd be able to get a lot of players that we've spoke about on today and previous, you know, off the books that probably won't want to be there. I think it's a great, great chance for some of these players. We've, you know, these talented players, we've got local lads who've gone out on loan to other League One, League Two teams. Um you know, so I, I don't think it'd be all doom and gloom again. But if if you said to me we'd go down and crank as manager, then I don't know about that. Well, I get it. I'm excited already just talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no in, no international break here for us when when you're in League One. Well, yeah, where do I sign? I'm getting, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about Karanka <laughs> in League One. <laughs> but no, um, I'd, I'd love to kind of get us a, maybe a young, like Gary Rout was at the time, you know, maybe a young kind of up and coming English manager that's making waves in the lower leagues. Um, I'd love to see us going for somebody like that um, with that kind of sort of pedigree. But I also wouldn't be against someone who's been there and done it because th- those are really probably the best sort of candidates you can go for. Um, but the difference for me, you know, you look at Blackburn when they went down. I mean, we, we had a part to play in that uh, when we beat Bristol 1-0. But Blackburn went down with, although it's not great to go down, they went down with positivity based on the fact that 
they were in that relegation battle for so long that season and they looked dead and buried. And obviously yeah. Tony Mowbray came in, really turned around the ship. And then there was positivity going into League One. They had a team to build on and that's why they bounced straight back up and they made, uh, you know, smart signings like Bradley Dack. Um, I think, you know, you, you'd want the club to go down if it did with some positivity. And that's what I'm not really seeing right now. So that could be a risky yeah. moment to it. You know, I mean, last season, although it wasn't a great season, we had the positivity around Jude. And um, it was just a pleasure to watch him grow into the footballer he's becoming. And right, can you, sorry, can you believe, you know, I just, it still baffles me now. Can you actually believe he's 17 years old yesterday playing in the Champions League? Oh, that's unbelievable. Mental. Absolutely mental. unbelievable. And do you know what? I, there was times where I questioned myself watching him where I thought, is he going to be this good? And yeah, <laughs> absolutely amazing. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I think he smashed it at Dortmund so far. I've not heard a bad word said about him. Yeah. So, um, hopefully the retired shirt thing is proven <laughs> correct. <laughs> oh, time we've worked our way back up the league, so it'll be time for him to come back. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like Dong said, when we're in the Champions League in three years' time. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three. Yeah, it could do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, I want to come back. I still can't believe he said that, but, uh, you know, it... It is what it is. Um, but now I suppose just to kind of wrap things up a little bit, uh, which player do you think needs to play on Saturday and why? I'll start with you, Will. Uh, Ivan Sanchez. I think just from a, a sort of a, watching the game at home, he's the only sort of one that gets you out of your seat um, and is direct. I think we had that with Bayer last year, but he's, he's dropped off quite a bit um, in terms of that impact. So, yeah, for me, Ivan Sanchez. Definitely good shout that, Tom. Yeah, um, Harper for me. I think I said it yesterday. I can't understand why he wasn't played in the first game when after he signed. Um, I think it was like two or three appearances off the bench before he started. And I just think, you know, you could see it last night that he's comfortable on the ball, uh, very athletic, you know, he can get up and down the pitch. And it, I've, I just felt like he was always available, which is something that we don't seem to have many players available calling for the ball. Yeah. Um, no, I completely agree with that one. Probably would have been my pick too, but just to be a bit different, I'm going to say Jake Clark <coughs> Salter. Yeah. Um, I think that. whenever we've seen him in a blue shirt, other than when he played against, played in left back at Cardiff, but that's not his position anyway. Um, you know, it's always been a positive performance. And um, I, I miss that partnership, you know, that we had last season where we went on like a kind of, I think it was 12 game unbeaten run. Him and Roberts at the back, that was solid. Which is surprising because Mark Roberts is one of the most on and off players I've seen at Blues for a long time. But no, Jake Clark's out of for me. I think him give him a chance because San Jose certainly doesn't deserve it from the blunder that uh, he can see. What, what a poor bloke! I mean, literally sunning it up in northern Spain and then he's come over here to. <laughs> but, I mean, God, God rest his soul. I mean, getting back, it feels. I feel so bad for him. Me too. <laughs> We've yeah, he's been sold a full stream, and he let Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Be in the Premier League by next year, pal, get yourself over, and then uh, that'll all be sorted. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not worked out that way. And I'm sure he'll be regretting his move. <laughs> uh, it's been a shame because he did have glimpses when he played in the middle of the park, but I think his, his head is down now, and that's clear to see. But um, no. Yeah, but go over to the MLS and go and play, you know, I don't know, <laughs> LA Galaxy. Even yeah, I, I think it'd suit him to be honest, kind yeah. of low style football. Um, but yeah, no, thanks for coming on, guys. Um, no we'll wrap things up there. Big thank you to a special guest for this evening, uh, Will. Uh, cheers for coming on, mate. It's cheers, been a Will. pleasure having you on the podcast. No, cheers, guys. It's been uh, quite cathartic actually, just to yep. uh, right the wrongs and uh, <laughs> get down to League One and uh, see what happens there. Yeah, definitely. I think the only positive was uh, Ali UC. So, you know, That's the one. spread the agenda wide. <laughs> definitely, definitely. But no, thank you. It's been great having you on, mate. And as always, it's been great having you on too, Tom. No problem, mate. Thank as you. Ever. But um, no, thanks for joining us, guys. If you downloaded the pod, um, go check us out on whatever platform you prefer. We've got plenty of pods upcoming and obviously some great ones we've released recently with former players. Uh, feel free to donate to the Patreon if you're feeling nice. Um, links down in the description. And um, we'll see you in the next one. Keep right on.